an Excel database without using a database. This is video four out of my Excel VBA advanced filter series. So let's demo the end result first. So on this particular spreadsheet, we've got two forms, two sort of, shall we say, database forms that can come up. Load blog post info and add blog post. Add blog post, if I click it, you just put in the blog post title, the blog post URL, and the date, so year, month, day, and you can just click add to add it. So for example, I can just type test blog post, and I'll make up a URL and click add. So that has been added. Now if I click load blog post, we get this particular form. So you can see that the blog post has been added. If we go to 2020, you can see we've got a number of uh, blog posts and you can see just like with a database, the videos change with the blog post. As I click on each video, you can see the image of the uh, thumbnail of the video changes. As I change blog posts, the uh, tags change here. So watch, and the tags have changed. Now bear in mind, this particular form is acting like a database form, but there is no database in Excel. I'm basically using the advanced filter to get this functionality. So how am I doing this? Essentially what I'm doing is I'm making each worksheet tab in Excel behave as a database table. So for example, each tab is a table. An analogy would be that each tab is acting like a VLOOKUP table, but by using the advanced filter in a creative way, um, it's acting like a database. So this might be a good time to ask the question, well, what is a database? Well, from a thousand foot view, it's a means of organizing data in a way that makes it easy to add, delete, retrieve, and amend data. So let's look at how this spreadsheet is organized now. So again, looking at the form, it's blog post centric. So for example, my blog post, Getting Started Coding in Libre Office Space form, has one video embedded in it, Code in Libre Office Space Simple Form. If we go to Libre Office Base, link images dynamically on a form, we've got three YouTube videos embedded in the blog post. So first we look at the blog posts, and then we look at the videos embedded in the form. So let's look at how we create that database relationship in Excel. So the spreadsheet contains six tabs. The uh, first tab being the front page, which you're familiar with. But after that, we've got table post pages, which is a sheet that refers to the post pages. Table video posts, map video post, map blog tag, which we'll get to both of those, we'll get to in a couple of moments, and table tags. So let's look at table post pages first. So this is table post pages. And it just consists of five columns. Now this is what a database table would look like. That is, for example, the uh, highlighted area here, but I'm sort of emulating it in Excel. So you have a column for the ID, a column for the page title, the page URL, year, month, and day. If you've looked at some of my previous videos uh, on the advanced filter, which hopefully you have, because the whole idea is this is video four of the series, we've got criteria here um, and extract areas there. So I'm blending the advanced filter concept with a database concept. So that's our database table, table post pages. Then I've created another sheet for the video post following a similar example. We've got a column for the ID, the video title, the year, month, and day when it was published, and the video ID, that being the YouTube video ID. In addition to that, I've got a, a table for the tags I apply. So the idea behind the tags being that if I've done certain things with certain videos, I'll put a tag on it. And then when I'm looking through my database, I know what's in various videos or if there's other work that needs to be performed. So basically with a database, you group different pieces of information or different styles or classes of information into different tables. Now to give an example of the reason we do that, but let's look here at a tag. Say for example, the tag LibreOffice is applied to seven different um, records here in table video posts, for example. The problem can be, what if you do a misspelling one of the times when you put in the um, tag LibreOffice into a, a post? Well, then if you do a search on LibreOffice, 
the tag that's misspelled won't come up. Or maybe you accidentally do a search and you get the misspelled tag. If that's the case, when you use a relational method, you only have to change the name in one place. So LibreOffice could become, for example, Libre Space Office. And then anywhere that Libre Space Office existed, the data would change totally. So you only have to make the change one time. That's one of the advantages of a relational database. You, re you relate related objects to one another. So let's uh, look at a practical example now. So if I click load blog post info again, and I'm going to click on 2020, and these three videos are embedded in this blog post. So let's look at how it's done. So if I go to uh, my table post pages, we can see that LibreOffice Space, I've given that an ID of 20. Now, what I'm showing you in this particular instance is how I can manage to link, shall we say, both multiple uh, videos to this blog post and link multiple um, tags to this blog post. Because if you're coming from the VLOOKUP world, normally you can only link one item to another item because you've got one ID, so you can't link an item to multiple items. Let me show you how you do it this way. So for example, blog post ID is 20. So let's have a look at table tags. Well, let's look at how we do it. If we look at the tags, we've got open office, database and base. Now let's go look at the uh, tags table. So we've got open office, which is tag two. We've got database, which is tag number three. And we've got base, which is tag number four. But tag ID, these, sorry, these being the IDs. But we look at the LibreOffice has an ID of 20. So how do we get that to show those three tags? You do it via what's known as a mapping table. So let's look at the mapping table for that. So we're going to map the blog posts to the tags. This particular sheet here, table map blog tag. So it's mapping the blogs to the tags. So if I, if we look here, we've got it's it's ID twenty. So if I go to the to this table and I put on a filter just to make things simple. So the blog post is twenty. So if I filter on the post ID of twenty, I'll put that in and just put enter. So we've filtered on the post ID of twenty, and the blog post ID of twenty maps to tag ID two, tag ID three, and tag ID four. And here we have tag ID two, three, and four. And that's how using some auto filter magic or shenanigans, we get these to appear here. Similarly, if we look at the mapping table for video posts, well, again, the post ID is 20. So these three videos map via the mapping table, table map video post to the blog. You may want to go over this video uh, a couple of times to get that point, but that's how we do it. Now, what's actually happening behind the scenes here in VBA is I'm getting the VBA advanced filter to perform these filters to these particular areas to power this particular grid. Let me show you it working. If we look here, we can see that the form is updating but what we're going to pay attention to now is what's going on with the auto filters so for example if i change the year to 2019 we're going to see the year change in the auto filter here and we're going to see the blog posts that exist for that year appear here so here we go 2019 so 2019 goes into the criteria only one blog post has appeared if I do 2017, 2017 has gone into this criteria and we've got all these blog posts appearing here. Now, in terms of how this particular grid uh, works, can I refer you to my YouTube video, how to make an Excel VBA list box behave like a grid, which will definitely be linked in the description below and maybe it'll be up here. So now let's have a quick look at how we implement the embedded videos and the tags on this particular form by looking at the advanced filter again. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to click on 2020 and we can see we have these videos here. So first of all, let's look at the mapping of blog posts to videos. We'll initially pay attention to the map video post table. So what's going to happen when I do this is the video post of 20, which we discussed earlier, is going to appear in this particular post ID. And then the salient relevant videos, for, video IDs for that from the mapping table will appear in column H. And then as a result of that, 
an extract is going to be done behind the scenes from the video posts table to this extract area here which will show the videos that meet the criteria that are listed in column H. I know that's going to obviously happen instantaneously but let's do it. So clicking on LibreOffice Base, we've got the video idea 35, 36 and 38 has gone into this extract area. The code then repurposed that extract area into a criteria area. And this criteria of 35, 36 and 38 was used as the criteria for the video posts, which then extracted that data to here. And then as again, how to make a list box behave like a grid, this particular list, this particular list box here points to that data and the VBA behind the scenes updates the list based on that. Similarly, if we do it again, the same is going to happen for the tags. So if I just click off of this video again, and we look at table map blog tag, you're going to see the post ID here of 19 will change to 20. And then immediately the tags related, the tag IDs related to that post will appear here. And after that, a extract from table tags will take place based on the tags that are in this extract area, which becomes repurposed to a criteria. And then the tags that appear in this area will result in those tag IDs being chosen from this table and the data extracted to this area here, which will then feed the tag grid or list box that's behaving like a grid. Let's do that. And there you have it. And you can see it's actually seamless. I've got some more videos related to this coming out, including how I've used class modules in this, how I've designed the program and some uh, object oriented design stuff related to this. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you uh, get notified when those videos come out. Thanks for watching.